it's really important to show up. Um, take the time from your life and show, you know, that you care about the community and be there. And, you know, so when the workers were participating in actions to bring pressure on a, a poultry market owner who owed her workers wages, the workers were going out with picket signs and I went with them too. And, and in that way, you know, I felt nervous. You, know, you, you you do kind of feel exposed. You're in this environment that's very different from you know some of the other things that I'd done. So when we had these meetings, everybody on the project was really experienced in doing community research. But there's this dynamic. When you're in a professional culture, you're used to participating in meetings and trying to get in your work, you know, um, and then on top of all that, we're conducting all of these in English. And so the other two staff from, from the Chinese Progressive Association were interpreting for the non-English speaking um, staff member. And so they're not fully able to participate. And then um, everything's happening so fast, people are talking over each other, that for the non-English speaking staff member, you know, it was hard for her to, to sort of get a word in edgewise. We did reflect on this and people noticed it. Um, then we started to conduct the, um, the meetings in Chinese and then all the English speakers wore the headsets with simultaneous interpretation. The native English speakers were quieter and that changed the dynamics a lot, but the workers were still quiet. In terms of cultural humility, we were really challenged to think, I think, a little bit more deeply about what culture is and how it doesn't mean thinking about um, a list of traits that you can ascribe to people, um, but that it's actually, you know, um, that involves you and your assumptions and, you know, how you project, you know, your assumptions onto somebody else and then um, at, versus what is their actual experience and who they actually are. I first heard about cultural humility when I was a graduate student in the master's program here at San Francisco State, but I feel like I first understood cultural humility as a concept a lot earlier in my life. It, it, it came from a place of invisibility, a place of kind of suppressing who I was as a woman of color, and now has completely transformed as, as an educator, realizing who I am, where I stand in the classroom, what my privilege is, but also what my voice means in, in the world and what it means as an educator. Um, it came from trying to be, to fit in, to do whatever I could to be Indian at home and not out in the world, and not, not express that. And it, it, it's become this, this, this marker of identity that I knew was always there that I could never really express growing up. And now it's, it's saying who that person is and, and acknowledging both my own power and privilege in a, I gotta check myself kind of way in the same respect, it's also saying, I am a woman of color, I have something important to say, and, and here I am. I think as long as um, power and privilege exists in society, we will always be struggling with um, being too humble as women of color, as women who come from working class backgrounds, as women who come from low, low income backgrounds or um, under resourced backgrounds, right? As long as there's power and privilege in society, I know I will always be struggling with that, and I struggle with that on a daily um, basis. SF stayed here to see how inclusive uh, our current policies and programming are toward transgender students. And I was just re reflecting about how it's actually very relevant to the topic this evening of cultural humility because we're talking about like transgender culture or queer culture at SF State and how it's respected or not right. and how like the institution can be culturally um, relevant or humble or respectful of the experiences of trans folks when they come to this place. The health educators that I work with are all transgender females and literally the second day of my job I walked into a meeting and it was a community advisory board 
all transgender females. And I was so uncomfortable, but at the same time, they made me feel so comfortable. They started asking me questions like, they noticed, you know, and they were like, so where are you from, you know? And I was like, I'm Iranian. Oh, we know this Middle Eastern transgender girl. Do you know her? And I was like, no. <laughs> So my definition of cultural humility is to be open to learning all the time. So what I want from you guys is to go around, introduce yourself, and tell us what cultural humility means to you. I first became passionate about cultural humility. Um, as an undergraduate student, I was interning with an organization, and um, they were holding a cultural competency training for Pacific Islanders um, and working with Pacific Islander communities. And as a biracial Pacific Islander woman, I was really excited and anxious to attend the training um, and to really learn about the material that was going to be sort of discussed and how others were going to learn, and myself included, about Pacific Islander culture and working with Pacific Islanders um, around health issues that were important to the community. And I think after attending the training, I realized that there was a sense of achievement and completion for those who participated. And um, I then was introduced to cultural humility as an undergraduate student in a class, just so happened around the same time. And I realized that um, a sense of achievement and accomplishment and competence and understanding sort of limits your learning. I can't really tell you what cultural humility means to me. I feel like I practice it and that's how I know. Um, but one thing that I think about uh, or that I can practice is um, cultural humility is poder hablar el idioma en el que, soy, en el que me puedo uh, expresar mejor. Y el idioma donde encuentro palabras de poder uh, contarle a alguien exactamente como me estoy sintiendo. Coming from a background in science and coming into public health and not ever hearing cultural humility in the sciences was very telling for me because culture is not something that's emphasized. It's not something that's talked about in a relevant way. There have always been very clear barriers present for particular minorities in science. You can see it when you're in the science classes. You can see it when you're in study groups. You can see it when you're looking at your professors. And I'm not just talking about racial minorities. I'm talking about a lot of underrepresented minorities in the sciences, like their race is a factor, but gender sexual orientation. I learned cultural humility through, um, I mean, two, two places. By my own culture, which being Cambodian, Southeast Asian, um, not knowing anything about it, my folks roasting me about um, not speaking well. And then um, after going to college and learning about it in anthropology and interviewing my parents about their experience, it opened my eyes. One of the things that I have learned um, in the past couple of years, I want to say, is just uh, listening to what I'm saying. And I mean, like, seriously listening to what I'm saying. Um, and one of the things that I have learned to listen to is when I say, I, I believe this, I do this. Um, and listen how that is very different from the we. We, I hear it a lot in the news, we Americans, right? Uh, like, we, who is the we speaking about? Um, it's to think about and listen to when we use the I, the we, the you. Growing up, I was like always interested in culture and other religions and just really learning about things from other backgrounds. And so I just figured that made me culturally humble because I had an interest. And so after studying a year in West Africa, I came back like, oh my God, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about black people. I don't know anything about African. I mean, it just like shook my world. 